Well, hello, everybody. It's wonderful to have you with us. I pray wherever you are that you know that God is exactly in the place where you are. Well, before we get to our daily devotional about experiencing the power of the Holy Spirit in our life, uh, I want to talk about a couple of other things. I've been encouraging people to read the book of Acts. If you have a Bible and you're not sure how to find it, just go to the index. You'll find Acts. If you don't have a Bible and you're going to read it on the internet and you're not sure where to go, go to this address, biblegateway.com. It's not our our website, but if you go there to biblegateway.com and then if you type in there Acts chapter 1 or 2 or 3, whatever you're going to read, and then choose your Bible because there's many translations. I read from the New Revised Standard Version, Catholic Edition, uh, the NRSV, or you can choose to read just from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. They're, uh, they're, they're exactly the same words. One's just got a few extra books than the others, which we'll explain one time at uh, some time. Then when you see the word the Holy Spirit or the word Spirit, circle it or write it down. And then what is the Holy Spirit doing? The Holy Spirit is guiding, providing, revealing, leading, uh, showing. Write out all of those things and it helps tremendously in your prayer and as we go through this series. Well, I receive many, uh, many pieces of mail, uh, a lot of email uh, comments and many private emails to me. And someone wrote to me this and said, at the age of 60 odd, this really moved me. At the age of 60 odd, I wish there was someone who had explained all of this to us the way you are, Bruce. Perhaps as younger people, we would have had a much deeper walk with God and not just going through the motions year after year. Thank you for following what God has sent you to do. God bless you all. Thank you so much for sending that to me. It, 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 it really touched me. Someone else wrote and said, thank you for your beautiful personal message, uh, Bruce. I'm deeply touched and grateful to have found you just this past Lent. Uh, and thank you to you. There are many people who've sent, and there's no, no I don't want to mention anybody's names. I'm very grateful. And uh, the reason you found us at Lent is we spent a lot of time advertising to tell people that the message, that what we were doing. And where that came from was, was I was, uh, I, I was in my office one day and uh, I got a phone call from a, a couple of Catholic priests who said, can we drop in? And they brought a priest from overseas, from New Zealand. And he came in and he said, well, I've just heard about what you're doing and I wanted to talk about it. And, and, and we sat down and talked. And then he invited me and our team if we would go to New Zealand and we would do a parish mission in their parish. And, uh, and, and in, uh, so a few months later, we agreed to go. And it was just a very blessed, it was a really blessed time. Well, one night I was sitting up, it was about one o'clock. I'd done the evening session uh, in the church and I thought I was awake. I was staying with the priest in his home and I thought I was the only one there. And, the pr and all of a sudden the priest uh, came in. He'd been out. Someone in the parish had died and he had been out at their home. And he said hello and he was surprised to see me up so late. And then, he, and then he was just going to bed and he turned around and he said to me, he said, how come I didn't know you existed? How come I didn't know you and your team were wrestling with these questions about how do we share the gospel? How do we share faith in a way that touches people? He said, have a look at what it's done in the parish this week. And, and I remember kind of feeling a bit awkward. And I said to him, Father, I, 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 I it doesn't seem very humble to me uh, to be advertising yourself. Um, and he said, oh, he said, so he got a bit a little annoyed, to be honest, or frustrated. And he said, so I meant just, just meant to sit down, have a prayer time. And God's going to say to me, there's this guy and his team. And, the, and they've been working at this way, these ways of proclaiming the gospel and, meet, and reaching people. And he said, God's just meant to tell me. And then I ring you up and you come. And then he said to me, he said, Bruce, it's not a question of being humble or not to tell people that you're there. I remember that. Bruce, it's not a question of being humble or not to tell people that you're there. It's your Christian responsibility. And I, uh, and I remember it really changed me. And, and from that time on, we made a decision that we would start to tell people. And so before Lent of this year, we did exactly what this lady said. I'm deeply touched and grateful to have found you just this past Lent. We spent a huge amount of time and a, and a large amount of money to tell people that we were doing this so people from all over the world could join us. Uh, I'm, you know, I, I, I want to ask you today, before we get to our daily devotional on experiencing the power of the Holy Spirit, 
I want to ask you today if you'd stand with me, if you'd help me tell more people that, that Jesus lives and that he loves us and he wants to affect our life and the Holy Spirit is given to us to empower our life and to change us. We can't just tell people in our churches because the truth is the most of the people are not in our churches anymore. We have to go beyond the walls and to do that through the media in particular and social media is very expensive. I call everybody who gives to us a faith builder and I'm so grateful to you, I really am. To all of our faith builder partners, those who give weekly or monthly or, or regularly to us in some manner, and I, I'm abundantly grateful to you because I really couldn't do it without you. Thank you. I, to be honest, I feel tremendously humbled that, that, that anybody would want to give to me. Uh, I'm very grateful and to our ministry. And, and I'd ask you, please help me to reach more people for Christ. So that this man at 60 who says, I wish there'd been someone, could hear the gospel. And my prayer is that other people would hear and they would be inspired to share the gospel too. Uh, as well, and be people who could come and stand here where I'm standing, women and men, and do exactly what I'm doing in sharing the gospel with others. Uh, the harvest is great, the labour is a few. So would you go to this address on the screen? Uh, or would you go to the Give tab? And I, I would be grateful, and I'll pray for you at the end of this today. So let's go on to our daily devotional today after all of that. Let's go on to our daily devotional today. Uh, about living in the power of the Holy Spirit. St. Paul tells us in the book of Galatians that there's this struggle going on within the one person, within the one form, one being, this struggle between the flesh, which is our desire to do whatever we want to do, and our spirit. And that humanity comes up with law, the law, particularly in the Old Testament, laws, that if people kept these laws, they'd overcome this sense of the flesh and they would make themselves acceptable to God. Well, when the Holy Spirit came along, the Holy Spirit became an, became an interior power within us, an interior gift within us with, with God lives within us and reveals to us the love of God to us. And our life is lived as a response to love. That's what we've talked about in the last couple of days. So Paul says this, and, and there's a lot to this, but it's beautiful. And it says this in Galatians 5, chapter, verse 16. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. And you'll see the fight between the flesh and the Spirit. For what the flesh desires is opposed it's to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. And I love that it says, and things like these. In other words, that's not an exhaustive list. I'm warning you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, in the opposite, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, uh, gentleness and self-control. There's no law against such things. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, competing against one another, envying one another. What, what the, Spirit, the Scripture is saying is, if we, if we live by the Spirit, let us be guided by the Spirit. So when the Holy Spirit comes upon us and takes up residence, when the Holy Spirit says to us, look how, how you are loved, that it's not about your effort, but it's about God's love for you in your life. It transforms our response. And so and, and as it transforms our response, as the Holy Spirit lives within us, it bears a fruit. It bears an outcome. In our backyard, we've got this, we've got this big pot plant and rosemary planted a fruit tree in it. And I said, well, what is it? And she said, it's lemons. And sure enough, lemons are beginning to appear on this, on this, uh, on this tree. And we know the tree by its fruit. And we know the fruit, we know the fruit uh, of our lives by the Spirit living within us. And it helps us overcome those things of the flesh that we must discipline ourselves to live. 
the gospel message, the Holy Spirit is there to empower us to live amazingly, abundantly and transform lives. And it's for this reason, as we're going to see, that we can have a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, to empower us in our life as we work forward today. I pray that the Holy Spirit would come upon you ever so deeply and more deeply today. Loving Father, I thank you today that you love us. Lord God, I just pray for every person listening to the sound of my voice. Holy Spirit, fall upon them more deeply today. Take up deeper residence in them today and may the fruit of their life, the fruit of their life, of which there is no law for, the fruit of their life, lead them more deeply into your presence and help us to overcome that struggle with the flesh, those things that would take us away from your will. Father, I thank you for all these people, for all of them who help me share the gospel and who stand with me in the ways that they do. I give you thanks and I give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, everybody, for being with us. Thank you for financially supporting us. Uh, me, I'm so grateful. And I'll see you tomorrow. And don't forget, wherever you are, God is never far from you.